right, so I've got a couple of uh, challenging ones in a second. For Eric, I watched your webinar on Cloud Cost Optimizations 2.0. And I want to understand the difference. I've got Cloud 2.0 and I have FinOps. What's the difference? Are they the same or are they complementary? You know, there is, the, the, it's totally complementary first. Of all. Mm -hmm. I mean, this world that we're living in is one where we need to bring a lot of context together. The, the FinOps Foundation, by the way, they have a ton of great data. You go to data.finops.org and, you know, number, <laughs> number one thing, getting engineers to take action, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and what's going to cause that to happen? It's data, right? You know. Engineers are smart people. They don't necessarily need to be told what to do. They want things to be automated for them. They want things to you know, come off their plate so they can focus on what they're building. They want things to be delivered at the right time, at the right place. I was in the security space for 20 years. And you know, when the security space started to move, application security in particular started to move away from the security team responsible to the software engineering team responsible, the companies that, were, that did the best in that space discovered that they need to be timely, they need to be accurate, they need to be clear. And, and, and precise in what they present. And if they can't do that, then it's better not to say anything at all, right? And just by doing that, they delivered a ton of success. You go back to that, that world and there was a kind of a, a watershed moment, right? Bill Gates wrote the trusted computing, um, um, his trusted, uh, you know, trustworthy computing memo in uh, what's 2002. And it basically said like, Microsoft's gonna stop writing software and we're gonna focus on security because we're getting hacked, our customers are getting hacked, it's horrible. We gotta stop and change, we gotta do something different. I think the cloud cost, you know, optimization market, this market, the cloud world ourselves, we're in a new kind of watershed moment where the problem is is that we, we have not yet made the shift, at least consciously as an industry, to realize that, wait a second, it's, it's the folks who are building. Right? You know, it's the folks that are creating this stuff that have been out in the dark. They haven't gotten this data. It's not for uh, wanting to do it, but they've just been missing the data. So the, the, the paper, the thing that needs to be, you know, that, that's coming, and, and I've been working on this for a little while to, to admit, <laughs> is that we need a world where we focus in on cloud-worthy computing, right? And the cost to operate is one of those big constraints that we need to think about. And it's the data point that is going to drive us all to do I don't know, amazing things, right? You think about some of the most amazing systems ever built in history. They were in worlds where the constraints were extreme, right? Like the Apollo 11 guidance computer is fascinating. Amazing constraints, right? We have the same constraints now and the economy is creating that pressure. I think we're gonna see some really amazing diamonds because of FinOps, because of all this attention. Matt, how is, you know, TD Cinex helping or helping with the uh, FinOps and the automation around it? How are we creating or are you creating the scalable portion of it and enhancing other partners or other folks within the FinOps? I mean, yeah. I... I, I imagine that it's very tough as me. Like I'm a, so I'm a small company. I want to implement FinOps. I can't, I can't do it. I don't understand. I don't know. Why would I lean on you for any of this type of right. stuff? Because I'll tell you what, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, in some cases I do, but. <laughs> well, I mean, it's for that efficiency reason. And because your dollars are better spent higher in the stack at things that touch the customer experience more. You know, if we look at kind of the ideal point for engaging with, a customer, it would be, you know, using, for instance, in the AWS land, the migration acceleration program or a similar one from one of our other hyperscalers and helping them get to the cloud in a way where they're paying attention to observability, cost management, et cetera, from the start, where they're doing those well-architected reviews and they're getting those best practices down from the start. But learning all that is difficult. So our partners, even if they're a small reseller systems integrator, MSP, and you know, there's a survey that something like 80% of MSP customers expect their MSP to be responsible for delivering on FinOps for them. Now that's a lot to learn if you're you know, out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, serving you know, small companies to really get an expert in that area. So they get to lean on us and let us keep our finger on the pulse of what's happening in that realm and really help them bring that holistic vision of FinOps to their, uh, their end customers so that they can focus really you know, on that customer experience. 
-hmm. So a customer is coming to an MSP and say, hey, listen, I need FinOps and I need you to implement it because it's customer. And they're like, uh, yeah, sure. I'm not sure what I'm doing. And then they <laughs> lean on TD Cynics, who will help them implement that throughout the entire process. I mean, I've kind of summarized it. All. Yeah. And, it, and it's not going to be a one time shot. You know, so we might wait a second. FinOps them. isn't like once and done. You mean I got to continuously do this? Yeah. Well, we might like, you know, start with Prosper Ops and out of the gate realize some savings, but then we might, you know, work with something like uh, Intel Granulate uh, and, you know, specifically target partners that have Linux workloads. So we don't look at the end customer. We try to keep that anonymized, but we call that partner and we say, hey, you know, you're running on Linux. Did you know? If you run granulate, you're going to be able to optimize at the OS level. Um, we might see them, you know, using a lot of S3 and not using Glacier. Hey, you know, right there, they might be able to save 50% on their storage costs if they just go and get smart about how they're, how they're doing that kind of stuff. So those kind of analyses that we do, we'll do over time and help uh, the partners, if they're MSPs or resellers or SaaS companies built on AWS to continually just get the most out of their cloud spend so they can spend the dollars in other areas. Joe, how is Prosper Ops either complementing or helping out with uh, TD Cynics within these customers, uh, you know, implementing or even enhancing their FinOps practice? Yeah, so um, so we're one of many tools that is in the TD Cynics family. And so if a reseller or an MSP comes to us and says, hey, we want to do FinOps or we want to get, we want to help our customers, they're demanding this. They can obviously work with us. They can look at hundred other tools and try to evaluate that. Or we can point them to our partner at TD Cynics, who's done hundreds of millions of dollars in AWS spend, have a lot of data, have already done the research, already have the best practices in place, where they can go and actually build it quickly and then start delivering for their customers. And, and ProsperOps is where we start usually. Yeah. Because we, you know, we partnered on the savings analysis that they have where a partner that's already using AWS, we can right out of the gate within a day have a savings analysis for how much they could save without re-architecting anything, just bringing their spend over. And then we also give them a platform that isn't doing everything that Cloud Zero is doing, but it is specifically built for helping a reseller carve up cost and get it to uh, the right customers and track the costs down at a granular level to those right customers and then bill them. Yeah, these savings analysis you know, through partners or directly, it takes five minutes to set up an IM role about four hours later, we'll have a report that starts to get built on our side. Someone smart like Stephen O will come in and make sure that that analysis looks good. And then we'll deliver it to the customer or through the partner within a day. Mm -hmm. So it's a very quickly, we can show them what they can yeah. save. And, and a lot of times through that discussion, we find very burstable workloads where yep. we know that we can't help, but we have a partner that can. And so we will kind of guide them to the partner that specializes in tagging, in spot workloads uh, that we don't specialize in. Mm -hmm. All and right. You asked a question about what is this 2.0 thing, right? Yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb here, John. Just uh, okay. So, All right. So, By the way, you are live and recording. I know. So this I know. Is a very so, you know, I think we've been talking about it pretty clearly. There's three things here, right? You know, there's, there's this world where we understand that these three things have to come together and be part of a single integrated world where they, the organizations that we work with, guided by partners, really, honestly, because every six months, the, this whole industry reinvents itself. So there's no way for, for ordinary people, really, to honestly keep up with this stuff. So on top of it all, we have to think first, are we buying correctly, right? How do we buy better, right? Then how do we build better? Then how do we get to profitability? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I think we, should, we need to move beyond just thinking about it as cost, because cloud spend is really an investment. You're expecting a return on that investment, right? So if you're buying better, you feel pretty good about you know, how you're going about that process. And ProsperOps completely automates that, right? If you're building better, right? And that's something that we focus on, something that um, Exosphere helps you know, in terms of how we're building applications, thinking about that, that technology underlying that. And then when you get to the point where you go, all right, now I wanna optimize around profitability. And you're thinking about the products, the services, the customers that you serve, the unit economics, right, of this, that's where you bring all this other business context in the equation, and now you have the trifecta, right? Not just the companies here, but the trifecta, honestly, about that's the, the 2.0 world we're trying to live in.